Sami, I also introduced to us the seventh vice chancellor of the University of Port Harcourt, Professor Joseph Ajenka, in our midst today, seated here. We also have a former acting uh, vice chancellor of the university, Professor Stephen Okodu, who sits here right behind me. We also have a lot of emeritus professors here. We have Professor Mark and Nicole also seated here, emeritus professor. And we also have emeritus professor uh, John also seated here. And we also have in our midst today other distinguished personalities. We also have the Vice Chancellor of Bayelsa Medical University also sitting here in our meeting today. We also have the Vice Chancellor of Federal University of Okoja, Professor Akumi, also in our midst today, Sir Yomu We also have other distinguished personalities and all political to be observed. May I respectfully invite the leader of the delegation, Waziri Bashiru Daha, to the Chairman of the Vice Chancellor of Federal University of Nigeria to kindly uh, speak to us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
has exposed me now. Of course, I was assistant to him. Now I have to take this uh, place, and I cannot uh, imagine how I can successfully occupy that place with the kind of distinction that he has led us. But the best uh, tribute I can give him is that I will do the best I can to try and emulate him. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I respectfully invite Chief Dumo Lulu Briggs, the full leader of the Briggs family, to kindly respond. Thank you, sir.
For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at a later day upon the earth. And though after my skin one destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The third stanza. your heart with trouble. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. The fifth and the last stanza. on the same page.
service is sub number 90.
be seated. All again. May we now call upon Ayo Tunde Tassie Amadi to take the only scripture reading. Is he around?
Gross. Thank you.
was the chairman of the River State Economic Advisory Council from November 2007 to May 2015. He was the chairman of the River State Independent Electoral Commission from 2007 to 2011. He was the chairman of the River State Community Foundation. He was the chairman board of National Hospital Abuja from 2006 to 2007. He was the chairman of the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Federal Universities from 2004 to 2005. And he was the chairman of the Association of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities from 2004 to 2005. He was also a member of the Strategy Advisory Committee of the National Universities Commission, which was set up to assist the NUC urgently revitalize the Nigerian university system. At the time of his passing, Professor Emeritus Lee Briggs, as a member of this organization, was in the process of revising the curricula of various university courses, especially those related to medicine, which was finalized and presented to the federal government of Nigeria in May 2023. He was a, he was a prolific external examiner and evaluator, examining in all but I think two of the Nigerian universities, also examining in various tertiary institutions in Africa, including the West African College of Surgeons. He was also a prolific writer, writing numerous publications, over um, publishing books, articles, workshop conference papers, technical reports, and a host of other um, publications. Minister Eric Fabrics in his lifetime also had a string of accolades that line his um, study shelf. Amongst this was the order of the Niger Delta that was conferred on him by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A topical period in Emirates' life, as most of us would know, was his time as the Vice Chancellor of the University of Botarwood. On the 10th of July 2000, he was appointed Vice Chancellor of the University of Botarwood, prior to which he had served in an acting capacity on two previous occasions. His time as Vice Chancellor of this institution was marked with an unparalleled drive for excellence, hard work, and integrity. One of such occasions where his drive propelled the university to hitherto unattained heights was the hosting of the 2004 Nunga Games. From a situation where there was a total lack of funds for hosting the games, the Nimibriks led committee convinced various sectors of society and stakeholders, raising enough funds to build an Olympic standard swimming pool, a world class stadium with tartan tracks, and a games village, which eventually metamorphosized into what is today known as the University of Portugal Sports Institute. Institute, introducing athletes known throughout the country as being among the best in their respective fields. It was also a pivotal time for him, as this marked the turning point in his career from medical professional to astute administrator. From taking on the helm of what was considered a sinking ship in January 1995, when he first acted as acting vice chancellor, he turned the ship around, and by the end of his tenure as the vice chancellor, the institution had attained pride of place of place as one of the universities of choice in Nigeria. In 1999, before he became vice chancellor of the university, the institution was ranked 25th amongst 36 federal and state universities by the National Universities Commission, the NUC, based on the quality of academic programs. However, following the November 2002 accreditation, the university was ranked, and after, after maybe serving for just two years as its vice chancellor, the university was ranked the first amongst all the universities, along with the University of Agriculture at Birmingham. This period of his life was the inspiration for the book he wrote at the end of his tenure as vice chancellor, which he titled Turning the Tide in his community and social life. Outside his academic achievements, he was also he was also a central pillar in society. He was a father to all he interacted with, treating everyone with respect and dignity. Always smartly dressed, a man of the microphone who never lacked the words to say. He you know, was constantly sought after as chairman of every type of occasion, from weddings all the way to funerals. His weekends were all the flow of activities over which he was presiding, and his car and room a graveyard for the million and one programs for these occasions for week for some reason which he never threw away. In 2002, as an elder statesman and in his capacity as the chairman committee of pro-chancellors, he led the negotiation on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria, successfully bringing the eight-month impasse between the academic staff union of universities and the federal government to an end. In his lifetime, he also served as a member of the River State Elders Forum, where he again applied himself 
bringing positive changes to the people and communities in the state. An example of this was during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. Mimi, as he had always done, showed up as a pillar of the Abonima Society. He constituted a high power and effective committee that mobilized and raised funds home and abroad to procure enough food, drugs, and sanitizing materials. The committee also ensured effective distribution of these palliatives to Abonima and its surrounding communities. In his desire to further serve his own community, Mimi was in the process of seeking a chieftaincy title of the late Young Briggs. Even in seemingly mundane matters, Mimi was the Even in seemingly mundane issues, such as the provision of electricity, Mimi brings shoulder to their manifest community where they live to solve the problem of incessant power failure. He donated an entire transformer to the area. The NEPA staff knew him as the man who dwelt in life, as it was said, with him around, there could be no darkness. His passion for exercise and health living inspired many around him, young, elderly, to live healthy lives. He was married to his alter ego. A that and he brings Lee Christopher Tom Ogie, his wife of 51 years, whom he had promised, assuming there is a reincarnation, that he will marry again and again. Their marriage was instituted in March 1972, where they carried out the highest form of the Calabari traditional marriage, the year ceremony. The Data Briggs was a strong pillar by the side of her husband, and both had total respect for each other. Their union is blessed with three children. One son and two daughters, Nina, Kika, and Goma, and five grandchildren. Professor Emeritus Mimi Briggs' devotion to Lady Lata Briggs was rivaled only by his attachment to his children and grandchildren. As a caring husband and loving father, he raised his family in the culture of service to others. The status of his family is a pointer that his was a life devoted to the service of God and humanity. He was a Christian who lived an upright and fair life. He believed that his existence and accomplishments in life were traceable to one source, God. He started his Christian life as a bell ringer in St. Paul's New Morning Lutheran Church of Bonino, where we are worshipping today. During his time in the University of Portalbot, he worshipped at our Savior's Chapel and upon leaving the University at King's Chapel Bishop's Court in Old Year in Portalbot. His dedication to the Christian faith led to his investment as the Knight of St. Christopher in 2004. In 2014, Professor Emeritus Mimibriggs published a book on his birthday entitled Mimibriggs at 70, Selected Writings and Addresses, 2006 to 2013, where he chronicled his footprints in 667 fascinating pages. His narrative demonstrated the essence of the true biography, shown of self-adulation, and in it, there was a lesson for every age. It was Mimi's non limitis, reminiscent of the Song of Simeon in Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 32 used as a canticle in Christian mythology. At 70, he had achieved that much, reaching the pinnacle of his profession. So what else? Hippocrates, acknowledged father of medicine, had in 406 BC defended Emeritus Professor Nimi Briggs in one of his long famous reformisms, in which he exclaimed, Ars longa vita brevis, art is long, life is short. A sentiment relevant of Nimi Briggs' own observation that Excellence lasts forever. Following a brief illness, the Mimibriggs passed early hours of Easter Monday, April 10, 2023, in the United Kingdom. He is greatly missed, but the Holy Spirit will bring solace to his family and all who knew him. We remain thankful for his legacy left to all, especially to future generations, to emulate. He has indeed finished the race and finished strong. May his gentle soul continue to rest in perfect peace. Amen. Adieu, Prof. the Great. Sleep and take thy rest. He is survived by his wife, children, grandchildren, and a host of relatives. Thank you. The last stanza of Psalm 879 for a brief address.
let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for bringing us together this afternoon. To pay our last tribute to your servant, whom you sent into this world, through whom you, you met this of so many. And also through whom a lot of people acquire knowledge. Our brother, our husband, our father, our dear friend, Professor Emeritus, the lead. So, Aaron, deeper to be bricks. Lord, at this time, we are about to hear your word. However brief it will be. And have your word, which is the truth, sanctify us. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let the see Thanks for 
that has laid up for me a crown of righteousness. A crown of righteousness. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This is the word of the Lord. They are the beloved in Christ Jesus. The theme for this brief message is hearing what is stated here by the Apostle Paul to his son. The theme will be the song of triumph by a dying Christian. The song of triumph by a dying Christian. The song has four stanzas. The first stanza says, I have fought a good fight. Oh, indeed, God will the good fight. With confidence, he mentioned it. Because he knew that in that fight, he got victory through Jesus Christ. Our brother, Professor, came into this world and he was born into a Christian family. Growing up, was baptized into the Christian faith. And from there, he knew that he would face his battle. Because life is war. Life is what? Life is what? War! Life is war! So, he who started his own battle. But he followed the footsteps of his parents, our father, Bishop Dito Bibris, and his mother, our wonderful Christian mother, Esther Harry. So I must say that he too fought a good fight. And he won the battle. Praise the Lord. The second stanza of the a Christian song says, I have finished my course. This is what a lot of people don't want to realize. You are not here on earth by accident. You are here for a mission. You have a course. And that mission you are expected to accomplish. You're not here. You've seen the world. Maybe your parents left one or two nine for you to enjoy. So you start to rock a hula, jump off and that. No! You are here for a purpose. Whether a man or a woman, boy or girl, you are here for a purpose, a mission. And you are expected to finish. That mission, to accomplish that mission. But, but all that he did to the church, when Jesus Christ met him on his way to the Damascus, rather to pursue more Christians, Christ called him around. And since then, he started defending the faith and also. Winning souls for Christ. A persecutor turning round to becoming a winner for that same cause he was persecuted. Great is our God. Our 
Hello, brother, professor. Coming up to this, you get to realize that he was here for a purpose. Where do you want? 
word of God. Control the word of God. We carry Bible, we go to church, we hear the preacher preach, and we just leave it there and go and continue looking for money. Acquiring this, acquiring that. They are good. Riches are good, but God first. That's why our Savior says, seek ye first. What? What? And it said, and then every other thing. Okay. Seek ye first. So we need to understand one thing. God first. Let God first be first in our, in our lives. Because without Him, we can do nothing. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the earth. The world and they that dwell therein. You belong to God. So you must know Him. You must know Him. Because that's time for you to leave this world. As our professor has done. That is time. You to leave this world, not body. Whether you live up to 200 years, one day you will go back. Like this, yes, it's clearly tells something in the in the chapter. There yeah, is time for everything. Time to be born and time to baby. You will depart because we have no abiding city here. Yes, there is a hope. Remember now that I, in the days of thy youth, means now that you are, you are healthy, your senses are working, your physics are working. Now! Because time will come to, to, to become dumb. I don't pray for that for you. But you cannot hear the gospel anymore. Time will come when the senses can no longer function properly. When you can only be remembered. You are living when they will ask you, just like our one of our old women, old mothers, grandmothers. And she had nothing to do in the church, nothing until when the day came, they called the pastor to go and preach to her so that she can be baptized. Uh, since she still has life in her, but about the preacher, man, they want to ask her. Our uh, mother, do you know who is Jesus Christ? She asked him, from which compound? <laughs> yes, from which compound? The people don't know how that are from five years compound. An upright man, man in policy, he says this, 
you will think to it. Oh yes. And we expect it to do it. There was this committee that was set up to look into the internal matters of Cambodia, which we do was the great thing. As busy as he was at that time, the moment I called him and said, Look, oh, we are meeting in so so place and so so time, we will be there before you leave. Good or evil, 
Whether done secretly or openly, there is a judgment and a reward. And let us try to make heaven by living a righteous life. A righteous life. An upright life. Let us fear God in all our deeds. Let us touch lights in all our deeds. Let us remain faithful to our God. Brother has finished his work and is going with songs and singing and joy and gladness of his heart. He has to go well. Wait. What about you? What about me? Let us do what is right. Look at our country. How it is. Because we don't have the fear of God. A country blessed, blessed with mineral resources. In the midst of plenty, we are stuck. Yes. Where there is much water, soup is entering into our eyes. So many things are happening. Because we don't have the fear of God, we don't love God. Because we prefer things in this world. You may be happy because maybe you have a source where one or two things are coming and they are, you feel they are comfortable. You are not comfortable. Oh yes. Or let me say it would have been better than what you think is better. Because the best is there for us. So let us fear God, my friends. Yes, let us fear God and live a righteous life. Let us show every time. Corruption and everything. And we make that to our Lord. We will see how our country will change for the better. Our prof and I had a discussion. This year, before the end of this year, we will go raise four. Yes. Now, some of you have known, you have noticed the prophets from the roof. The church will be 100 years old. The beauty will be 100 years old in July. This July will be 100 years old. So, those of you in the civil engineering I told you, you can tell that the, the, the structure has started to show some sign of uh, aging. So now that we are here, it is a call from God as is the particular let us maintain it. The roof is leaking. Even if you look at the, of the tower here, the glasses and everything, you know, uh, so please help us because we made an arrangement. He would have been the person to invite you so that you can come and help him, join him to raise for the maintenance of the cathedral building. So now that is God. I know you are all children of God. The Spirit of God is in you. And you want to help assist this building, an edifice, an inheritance from our forefathers. We will not let it fall down. Let us help the cathedral. We will help you as you think about it and decide on what to do. As you are here, the second name for this cathedral is. The temple of the new covenant. And as you are here, if you have any problem, any challenge, because this is where all my people, all the big men you heard and those that are sitting here, this is where their blessings are. I'm proud of that. So, snap on your head, challenge God here, and see if God will not bless you as He blessed the people of our Oh, yes. Yes, and he answers prayers. So may God bless you as you have come. And may the one you are giving to our prophet, not in death, but never the living, may honor be a portion. May God's blessings be a portion. May honor never depart from your house or from your family. In the name of Jesus. At the beginning, 
may you prosper. Spiritually, may you prosper. No our country will prosper. And all that we have seen, the evil that we have seen, will be a thing of the past. May God help us and bless us. May the gentle soul of our prophet, my brother, my brother, as well as the same father that there are different mothers. The same father, his father, happens to be my father, spiritual. He made me what I have today. And I'm just in the, in the shoes of his father. That's how I say. I regard him as my brother, my single brother. Wonderful man. We are so rest in the bosom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now and forevermore. Let us pray. Pray for River State. Pray for Nigeria. Pray for the family, the wife and the children, the entire family of our prophet soul. The wonderful, gracious, merciful God, continue to bless Nigeria. Now, I think we don't go where we are going, let him show us the way. Let him bless the country. We are expecting new government. Let there be peace. Let there be unity. And let there be progress. Strike actions are already going on, and more are being threatened. We need peace. Unity. Most in the fear of God. Pray for our state. Thank God for our government, the deputy, and those who are in authority now that they are leaving and handing over to a new, go a new government. We thank them and may God bless them. And may God also direct the new government that is coming. Of the progress, unity of our state. We pray for our, our dearly beloved wife, if our proud lady Nata and the children. God continue to console them, to comfort them.
At the appropriate time, we will also recognize all the dignitaries that are here. And uh, in the name of Jesus, I welcome you all. We shall take some performances from different choirs. First of all, the Primates family of the Fellowship of Lutheran Congregation, Nigeria, worldwide. Asian and modern.